For those of you who don't know me already, my name is Craig, host of Digital Startup, breaking down tricky tasks into simple steps so you can build a successful online store. In this series, I'm going to be creating an e-commerce store from scratch using Magento 2, and I'm going to tailor the store around selling cases for eyeglasses. In last week's episode, we started to work through the initial configuration settings of Magento 2, and in today's episode, we'll continue to work our way through the initial configuration settings. This episode is slightly longer than the 20 minute target, but that's because last week I promised you a giveaway, and I'll go over those details at the end of this video. If you're watching this before the 4th of May 2018, then stick around for that, as you could still be in for a chance to win. Anyway, if that all sounds like something you might be interested in, I'll see you in just a second. Right then guys, before we start, I just wanted to go over some announcements and stuff. So first of all, um, don't forget there is a link in the description below, which will take you to this article here, where you can find a catalogue of all the videos that I've been putting together, as well as a few show notes for those episodes and where you can download all the assets like the images and the CSV that I was working on in the first episode. Uh, also, don't be afraid to ask any questions in YouTube in the comments. Um, I can appreciate sometimes it can be a bit daunting to be the only person asking a question, thinking, am I asking a stupid question? Will people berate me for it? But I'm not like that here. If just, just go ahead and ask your question. If you think it's a silly question, there's a good chance there's somebody else out there that also wants to ask that same question who's afraid of asking that question. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, also, if you had or hadn't noticed, I've, st I've changed all the thumbnails for the videos now. So, I, I, was, I, I wondered whether I should do this or not in case I confuse people. But this is the design now that you should be looking out for every Friday. It's just a bit bolder and you can actually read all the text on there. I was afraid that people weren't noticing what was on there before because it was a bit small. Uh, okay, also, um, for those of you who have asked, I have added a tip jar that you can find at the bottom of the digitalstartup.co.uk website, um, except in PayPal, Litecoin, and Nano. So don't feel like you have to but if you want to you can do that there uh okay also last week i mentioned that i wanted to do some sort of giveaway for you guys and i gave it quite a bit of thought um i'm i'm gonna go over the details towards the end of the video because i know there's some of you out there that won't be fussed and just want me to crack on with this uh with this episode so i'll go over those details then but just to give you a heads up it's a competition that's going to run for about eight weeks and it's a giveaway for a Magento 2 theme worth $99. But I'll go over all those details at the end of the video. Okay, let's let's crack on then. So let's see if I can remember my password from last week. Okay. Oh, looks like there's a, a new Magento update. Maybe I think we should cover. I won't do the update. I'll probably do the update next week, and I'll do it with you guys. Um, I'll only be able to do it once, so it'll either be via the web setup wizard that I'll do it, or via the command line. I think the way I've done this video so far, I'm probably going to do it via the web setup wizard, but I'll go over that with you then, which leads to a good one because one of you guys asked me about showing you how to back stuff up so we can do all that in one. So we'll cover that next week, amongst other things. Uh, so where were we? We were in no, we, we were in stores configuration. I know when I see it. Um, general, I think we'd done customers. We'd done persistent shopping cart, hadn't we? Yes. So the next stage was sales. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Do I want to hide the customer IP? No, let's leave that. The, okay, so the way Magento is built, now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's tailored towards um, the US market originally. And the way uh, in, in the US and possibly other countries, um, 
you you guys have a you you guys list subtotal shipping tax and grand total in a certain order over there in your invoices in the uk we do things slightly differently i can't remember exactly what that is so i'm going to leave it for now but it's just worth noting that we'll probably revisit this just to check um so if you want your subtotal and shipping to show in a different order this is where you would do it um like I said, we, we might revisit this later on because um, it, it is pretty important. Do I want to allow reordering? Yes, we're going to leave that. Uh, logo to use for the PDFs and the emails. Okay, since the first video, I've actually added to the assets library. Again, a link to that will be in the article. I have made um, some little dummy uh, logos. So I'm just going to upload those for you now. Okay, so they're in there, and we need to add the address. So let's take that from the stuff we did before. Okay. Uh, minimum order amounts, no, that's not applicable. I won't be using that. Um, dashboard aggregated data, no, don't need to do that. Um, okay, I think we're going to be skipping most of these. Allow a gift message. No. Minimum advertised price. Nope. Instant purchase. Oh, yeah, that was a new feature they added, instant purchase. It's, it's yes by default. I've not tried that out. I think that came out in one of the last updates. I'll leave that as enabled for now. Um, so I'm going to save those changes. Obviously, there wasn't much to change there. Let's move on to sales emails. Okay. Uh, asynchronous sending, not needed. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to expand all of these. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be leaving all of these as default. So do I want to enable the order emails to go out? Yes, it makes complete sense to do so. Um, who should I send it from? Your order confirmation email is defaulted to the sales representative. If um, if we go back to the last video and we went in the store email addresses, you'll recall, well, I'll click on it anyway, you'll recall I've set all the email addresses and all of the senders to the same person. So for me, it's irrelevant. I don't need to change that. For you, you might want to. Uh, where was I? Sales, sales emails. Uh, so I'm going to leave that, and yeah, so pretty much leaving everything there. Okay, so the PDF printouts, let's have a look. Display order ID in the header, yes. Yes, I do, yes, I do. Again, we're leaving all of that. Tax, oh, this is always a fun one. Let's expand all of these. Okay, tax class for shipping, non Default tax for product, taxable goods, yes. Uh, default tax class for customer, retail customer, yes, we can leave all that. Okay, calculation settings. Okay, this is going to be one like the, um, just like the, uh, oh, where was it now? Let's go back to sales. Okay, just like the sales order, I think we're going to go back to tax because, again, I, it's probably my fault for not doing the preparation work for it, but I want to double check that all the tax is being cor uh, applied correctly before I start messing around with it. It's probably okay to leave it as the default for now, and I don't think the whole country thing's gonna um, apply, um, but I will come back to this. Um, okay, default tax, destination, calculation. Well, we, I know I can change that, first of all, to UK. Uh, and leave that okay okay the checkout okay check out options enable the one page checkout yes uh, allow guests to check out now I don't want to digress here but this brought up an interesting debate and it has been a debate that I've come back to uh, before when working for other companies whether you should allow your customer to check out as a guest because forcing them almost allows you to get to, to, to take their details and know more about that customer 
where as a guest, obviously, they don't have to give as much information. But at the end of the day, if you want your customer to check out as quickly as possible, which is the aim at the end of the day to make them to get them on the page and get them to check out as soon as possible, um, the best solution does seem to be to allow guests to check out. So I'm going to leave that as a yes. Uh, enable terms and conditions. I'm going to set that as a yes, and I might elaborate on that a little bit more towards the end of this video. Let me make a note of that. Okay, shopping cart lifetime. I am going to leave these as default for now. Uh, shopping cart sidebar, yep, leave that. Fail payments, leave that. Save config. Like I say, a lot of these settings can be left as default for the time being. Um, some of the ones that I'm changing, ones that I'm like, yeah, I definitely don't want it that way. And other ones, obviously, we'll come back and revisit because it's um, because I'm not quite prepared to make that commitment just yet. So the shipping uh, settings, uh, origin, I'm just going to put, technically everything would get shipped from the store, that I think. So I'm just going to put those details in, um, wherever it was, Unit 2 Phantom Park. Okay, multi-shipping settings. I'm. I know. I definitely know. I don't need to touch that. Shipping methods. Uh, table right rates is a good one. Um, it's probably one that's worth revisiting in the video because I can talk about this one for quite some time. But for the sake of this. Uh, this series and just for the testing purposes um i'm gonna put f enable flat rate okay that's enabled by default and i'm gonna make sure nothing else is on okay yeah table rates is a good one because you can um ship things out depending on like the weight of the product and the location and um, that that's a great one uh, payment methods that is definitely a video worth coming back to at a later date. And fraud protection. Now, fraud protection is powered by a third-party service called Signified. Um, it was introduced in Magento version 2.2, if memory serves. Now, I've got this turned off, and I won't be using it um, in this video. And in the my actual job job that I'm using, that I'm in at the moment, we don't plan to use Signified either. It's... Um, it looks good, but um, other payment pro providers like SagePay, for example, already have that built in. But what it does, it looks out for uh, irregularities in the customer details when they make a purchase, and it flags it to say this might be dodgy or it might not be dodgy. Like I said, there is a monthly fee tied to it, um, but I won't be using it. Uh, dot mailer, we're not going to touch. Services, services, don't need to touch that. And then advanced. Okay. So a quality of life setting um, is that when, for me personally, and I know for the sales guys that have experienced working with Magento, is that when they log in for the first time, it's more efficient to log in and see the sales that have taken place, that you could administer them um, in some way, rather than seeing the statistics of what you you've sold um, so because of that I'll be changing startup from the default dashboard over to sales orders um, always a popular choice okay admin base URL use a uh, customer admin URL I'm actually um, when we set up um, this installation of Magento through Nexus they actually already set a um, custom admin URL of digital eight underscore admin. I'm kind of happy leaving it at that, but if you did want to change it, you would simply deselect these two and um, change it. So you'd go, if, so if you had a default there of slash admin or you just wanted to change it, you would click on use system value um, 
use sorry use a custom URL yes and then you'd put something in there like something no nobody would think of Bob is the best slash no one's gonna think about searching for Bob is the best to join hack into your Magento account um, <laughs> but yeah anyway uh, let's leave that as it is okay um, admin account sharing no um, there there was something I did want to change here because a lot of the defaults are fine as they are um, I'm a big fan of case sensitive passwords so that's gonna be a yes um, Force password changes on by default. Password lifetime. It, call it the paranoid within me, but I'm changing that from 90 days to 30. Uh, dashboards, enable charts. Yes, why not? And, and I'm going to leave everything else there. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, system I'm pretty sure we can leave for the moment. Yep, we can leave all that. And developer, I'm pretty sure we can leave everything as it is. Um, yep, we can leave all that. When we finally come to publish the, the website, uh, one thing that we definitely want to come and do afterwards is visit um, the advanced developer section and enable merge JavaScript and merge. Um, sorry, you'd want to enable merge JavaScript files to a yes, minify to a yes, and you'd also want to do the same for CSS as well. I'm not going to say that at the moment. The reason being is that. Um, when we're working with Magento at first, it tends to separate all the files and make all the files that make up the pages into separate files. It makes it much easier to develop and to debug, see where you're going wrong. When you have these enabled whilst you're trying to um, develop your site and debug it, it becomes very difficult to find out where um, broken code might be because it makes it all merged into one file and it makes it unreadable by taking out all the... Um, the spaces so it all becomes one huge block of text so we want to leave that as no for now and then we want to make it yes when we launch um, the reason why we want to enable it when we launch is because it makes the page more efficient when it comes to loading it and it can drastically cut down your page load times on your Magento website so we'll come back and do that at a later date so I'm not going to save that but um, I just thought I'd mention it uh, static file settings okay cool aside from that we're pretty much done with the configuration so I mentioned just now that I wanted to go back and talk about the terms and conditions um, I've just I've got just enough time to talk about that so if we go to stores terms and conditions and then we add a new condition so we'll call this condition name uh, agreement. We might want to refine this at a later date. I don't know, but uh, we enable it. Um, I'm going to leave it as text only, applied automatically. Hmm. I guess it depends on your business type as whether you'd want it checked automatically or not automatically because you don't want someone to argue that they didn't see it and then click submit on the order and and they'd have a valid argument to say they hadn't read it because that's on by default. I'm gonna put it on manual. I touched taught myself into it. Enable for all stores. Checkbox text would be something like I agree. And this is where you'd have your terms and conditions in place. Like um, so it, this is great for kind of covering yourself. And I, I appreciate not every scenario you'd want terms and conditions uh, turned on, but a company that I work with um, at the moment deal with very large, heavy goods. And those goods aren't wheeled into the house. 
Instead, they left what's called curbside, uh, where it's the customer's responsibility to actually take those goods into the property, not that of the delivery drivers. And one thing that we use the terms and conditions for is to say, hey, look, you agree, you, before pressing submit, you're able to buy these, you agree that you understand, you have to be there, you're competent enough to take those goods in by yourself and that you're not expecting the delivery driver to do that for you. But as we're selling eyeglass cases on this site for the moment, I guess for the sake of argument, we could say, um, okay, we could say uh, when placing, placing your order, you agree that your parcel may be left in a safe place if no one is home at the time of delivery? I mean, I put a question mark on the end. Um, when placing your order, you agree that your parcel may be left in a safe place if no one is at home at the time of delivery. I think that kind of makes sense. Um, so let me save the condition. Cool. Now, unfortunately, we can't see what that looks like at the moment because we have no products added to Magenta at the moment, so I can't put anything in the basket. But I will show you that when we come to do that. So that kind of wraps things up in terms of finishing off the um, configuration of, well, the initial configuration of Magento. Um, I do want to talk about going to taxis in a bit more detail. I think that's going to take up five or 10 minutes of our time. So that'll be something that we cover in next week's episode. Um, I'm not quite sure what the rest of the episode will entail yet. So it'll be a bit of a surprise, I guess. But enough about that. I promised you that I would talk about the uh, giveaway. Okay, firstly, this is not a sponsored video. Um, I haven't been paid to talk about the theme. I haven't been paid to talk about the marketplace where the theme comes from. I am going to be buying this theme with my own money. Um, I just thought I'd clear that up uh, before I start going into things. Um, okay, so this is the giveaway prize. It is a $99 theme available from Theme Forest. Um, this is it here. It makes your, it makes the default theme of Magento look rubbish. I really, really like it. It's extremely popular. Um, let me uh, pull up the details for that. Okay, so it has a 190 plus page documentation, a two minute easy installation, it's extremely customizable and it comes with free updates guaranteed. You get custom sub themes, uh, unlimited colors, brand logos, over 50 content placeholders. It has a customizable responsive layout for mobile devices. It has a fluid grid system with 12 columns. It has light boxes for the images and it's multi-store ready. So let's have a look. So if we go into uh, their, one of their featured products, um, this is how it looks. So look, we can zoom into the image. Uh, we can hover over the image. Um, it just all in all is very, looks very much more professional. Um, obviously you, you need the content in place for the theme to look good. So obviously you need good product imagery. You need good um, text for the, the descriptions of the products in order to, to pad the whole thing out. But I thought it was pretty cool. Let me just bring up the uh, Theme Forest page. So this is where you can actually buy it. Um, like I said, those are some of the things. The customizable design where you can literally use color pickers whilst designing the page. Um, Shadows, patterns, backgrounds, uh, the responsible, responsible, the responsive layer, as we mentioned. Um, again, more stuff about the layouts. Um, yeah, there's just there's there's loads going on. Uh, let's have a look. It's had nearly nineteen thousand sales, and it is rated five stars, four point eight average, uh, based on 
1,339 ratings. So it's a pretty good giveaway. I thought it was pretty good. I figured it was better than giving away an extension because an extension is quite specific. Whereas with a theme, you everyone needs a theme and you can tailor it to your own brand. So we're going to go ahead with that. So let me just pull up the details. So rules. Okay, to enter, all you have to do is sign up to the digital startup newsletter. You'll find a link to that in the description of this video as well as future videos going forward. Um, if you are already subscribed to the newsletter, you'll be automatically entered. Uh, as an added bonus for signing up, you'll also receive a welcome email containing some discounts for Magento 2 extensions by other developers, uh, ranging anywhere between 10% off and 30% off. So you're gonna get that straight away um, as a welcome email. Um, for signing up regardless of whether you win or lose the competition i've set to end on monday the 4th of may 2018 which is just over eight weeks away i figure that i'm going to talk about the giveaway in each episode moving forward because i know not everyone gets to see my videos within the space of a week so i figure that gives loads of people enough time to become aware of the giveaway and then what I'll do, I will do the draw on the video um, that I produced that week so you can see that it's all fair. Um, I'm going to put further rules down in the description just in case I forget any. Uh, once I do the giveaway, I'll either give you two to three weeks to claim that prize just in case A, you weren't that fussed to begin with, um, or B, be an email address was wrong or something either way i'll make sure that somebody gets it okay uh let me just have a look see what else i also wrote down okay yes yeah, so the general rules, rules were sign up to the digital startup newsletter to enter if you already entered then you're already in it to win it oh god i feel so cheesy saying that uh existing subscribers yeah um Competition ends on the 4th of May 2018. If the prize is not claimed within three weeks, I wrote, the winner will be re-rolled. Uh, your personal details will not be shared with anyone else and only be used for the purpose of the newsletter. So I hope that was pretty cool. Um, do let me know in the comments what you think about it. And until next time, guys, take care.